Welcome back to the Trade Hacker Mindset. In this episode, we are going to dive into the topic of the hidden messages in water. And we have a special guest with us today. Trading the markets can be difficult to master and seemingly just out of reach. Professional traders have a secret. Trading requires total mental and emotional control. It requires the Trade Hacker Mindset. All right, so let's jump into this topic of the hidden messages in water. And I want to introduce you to, for folks in our community, you may recognize her as Theta Junkie. Uh, Laura is with us today to discuss some concepts that I think are critical, not only to the way that we think in general, but also how we can apply it to trading. So Laura, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. So before we jump into this concept, because uh, I'm excited to, to talk about this and share this with the community, but before we do that, let's jump into who is Laura? Who is Theta Junkie? Who is this, who is this Theta Junkie? Right. Well, I think most people listening to your podcast already know what Theta means, but Theta is the, the concept of time is money. And, um, you know, with options, I think that that was sort of my initial goal was to sell covered calls and write some, you know, some different options and, and just get paid for being patient, which is not really my strong suit. So that that in itself was a life lesson. But so that's where the Theta Junkie name came from. But um, as far as me, um, I would just classify myself as a lifelong student of the human experience. And in my little vocab, I like to call it the human experiment, because I, I look at everything in that way is is an experiment. And, and if I do it this way a number of times, how will that result and what will happen? And um, I love learning. I love science. I love, as you can tell, experimenting, tweaking, changing. Those are attributes that, that they can also get in the way sometimes. So I've had to learn um, some workarounds for that. Um, another thing to know about me is that I grew up as a Navy brat. My dad was in the Navy. They, my parents were very, very young. I always lived near the water. And water has always had a special significance to me in terms of lessons. And for some strange reason, being near the water grounds me, which sounds like opposite um, concept, but the water has always been an integral part of my life experience. And when I get a little further, you'll see how it kind of translates into some of the lessons I've, I've learned about the market and trading. And so that, that's the most important thing. Um, you know, about the water. And then when we talk later about Dr. Emoto's experiments and um, it, it sort of tends to come full circle and I find life tends to do that the longer I live. So, so what's your, what, do, what is your share about a little bit about your expertise or your kind of career outside of trading? What, what's your background there and, and how did you get to that place? Yeah. So I think growing up with such a move around lifestyle and I was always seeking structure um, I, I really wanted two plus two to equal 4.000. And I, in some sense, and also a lifetime of an undiagnosed ADD, didn't realize that that was, I was seeking that as a workaround. Um, so I majored in chemistry and physics and math. And, you know, I was one of those nerds with a pocket protector and calculator. I just, I just love all that. But mainly, I think it was more just, uh, it was my attempt at a workaround. And um, so after college, I went on to work as a pharmaceutical chemist for a couple of years, worked on my MBA at night. And it was during those years that I was buying some stock. And this will date me a little bit, but I'd get a call from a landline from my stockbroker asking if I wanted to write a covered call. So he would spend a few minutes explaining to me what that was. Um, it seemed like free money to me and I just couldn't see a downside. And so that was really how I got started um with the whole theta experience and curious uh, what what kind of commission rate were you paying that broker at that point twenty seven dollars and fifty cents each way all right so for all of you who are complaining about your 50 cent or dollar commissions with your broker twenty seven dollars and twenty and fifty cents all right go ahead right. sorry oh and i remember vividly it was um i think i may have had a couple hundred shares of nike stock and so maybe 
it was a dollar fifty, maybe even a dollar twenty-five. So it, you know, in terms of our language, that's one hundred and twenty-five dollars I was going to get paid. But then I had the courtesy of paying twenty-seven fifty to make that. And I remember just watching the market, and I believe that was the day that it, it was back then that I had to get my IBD newspaper to kind of get the quotes. And I know, like that sounds like a hundred years ago, but um, I just. I started to notice the market had these waves and these movements, and it reminded me a lot of the ocean, kind of the rhythmic flow of, you know, the Zen movements of the ocean and the waves. And um, I remember calling my stockbroker back from a landline <laughs> saying, well, last week I sold the covered call. Can I buy it back? And I'll never forget him saying, well, yeah, but why in the heck would you want to do that? And I just, it, it intuitively spoke to me as, well, if I buy it back now while the wave's out, when the wave comes back in, maybe I can do it again. And so, you know, you can do the round trip cost on that. So to make $150 to spend whatever, 55 to, to keep the other night. So it, it was a very probably inefficient process, but it opened my mind to the idea of you know, getting paid for your time. And being able to multiply that, which you can't do really, you know, on your job where you're trading time for dollars. So that, that kind of got me really excited. Very cool. Um, so it was also those years that I was 100% convinced that it was all formula driven, that there was no reason to pay attention to trade psychology, which was in the periphery at that time because it was just a formula. Just give me the formula. And that's all I need. Just give me the strategy, the formula, I'll follow it. You know, that was my little cookbook chemistry, um, you know, lessened from the market. But, um, and I always think of the Charlie Brown teacher when, you know, they're talking, it goes, wah, 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 wah. That's what I heard. Whenever trade psychology came up, I was hearing just fast forward to the formula, wah, 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 wah. Well, we all know anybody who's been in trading more than a minute um, is probably chuckling at that one, but um, I kind of wish I'd paid more attention to the want, 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 wants because you know the the market had a lot of lessons to teach me, and um, there were some other things I needed to learn before I I became you know a little bit more right brain. And so then, myself. when when you you were trading cover calls to start, and then what was your next step in strategy or uh, advancement in your options trading? Well, let me tell you about the mistake I made next. Okay, perfect. Have you heard Nicholas Darvis, how I made, I don't know, two million in the stock market. Yep. He talks about he was a dancer and he would get these telegrams. And so he was very disengaged from the market and he kind of watched it from a distance. And his assumption was that if he could get to Wall Street and be there every day, he could just 10x what he was doing from his little, you know, distance platform. Well, that was kind of my idea, too. And so right around 2000, during the irrational exuberance, you know, little time period, um, we had just sold a house. We were building another house. And so we had this little nest egg and, and I was trading. And, you know, I think we all know how this story kind of ends with the dot com burst. But um, fortunately, I, I had some pretty good money, some risk management things in place, but and was able to get out. We still were able to buy our house, but it was a painful lesson. And, um, you know, so that kind of was the next lesson in, wait a minute, maybe there's more to it than just a formula. And maybe, maybe I kind of enter into this equation as well. So um, it was about that time also that I left the lab, got into sales, and I needed a lot of skills that I didn't have, that I didn't learn in chemistry class, like setting goals and people skills and organizational skills um, in regard to just people skills, really. And so I set off on this tangent to read Think and Grow Rich and set goals and attend Dale Carnegie. And I mean, I never do anything small. I'm, I'm always just jumping in with both feet. I admire people who can learn from other people's mistakes because I have a couple of kids and I watch them all and one of them can do that. And I think, Boy, life would be so much easier if I could do that. But no, sadly. So um, during those years, I had just amazing, well, well first, my left brain was objecting completely. I, I, you know, I was always a goal setter. I could, you know, I, I like lists. I like the whole concept of thinking grow rich. 
but it really digresses towards the end into being surprisingly, if most people have gotten into it as far as I let myself go, it becomes a spiritual kind of document. It's, it's really, it lifts off the page. It's much more than a physical think about what you want and, you know, see it materialize in your life. It's, it, it really plays into, there's an element of, of the unknown at work. And my left brain had a very difficult time with that. I pretty much had to say, all right, let's just put that on a shelf and pretend that this works and let's just try it and experiment. And by, you know, by gosh, it started working. I mean, and it was working and working and working that to the point where my, my left brain just had to sit back and, you know, just, uh, there was no explanation to some of the things that happened during those years of um, manifesting and, you know, achieving goals. And so that was my right brain years. Um, those were my right brain years. And, um, but basically I wasn't, I was sort of a person at odds with um, each of these two halves of myself. I, I was very analytical. I was very, you know, into the energy part of, you know, this whole experience, but but they didn't really come together until I started reading Dr. Moto's book called The Hidden Messages in Water. And, and for I, those I, who have who are not familiar with the whole concept, can you give a quick summary of, of what that book is about? Or you can save that till we till we jump into it, oh, whatever you want. No, no, no. I'm, I don't recall how it could have been one of those experiences. I was at the bookstore. I mean, to me, that's like Christmas being in the bookstore. And the book fell off the shelf at me. I mean, if, if it didn't happen that way, it was pretty close to that. And I sat down and the thing that hooked me was that it was by a Japanese scientist. I think he was a physicist. And his intention was to photograph the crystalline structure of water molecules. And I think originally he, he wanted to compare like fresh water from certain areas of Japan to the damned water here or there. And, um, you know, this is, it's been a few years since I originally read the book. And I went, I have bought this book dozens of times. I've given it away to people. I've earmarked it and I cannot find my copy this morning. So, um, but basically what he was realizing is that um, water has a molecular structure that can absorb the, vi the vibrational frequency of what's around it. And it can be photographed and measured. And so he began to question what can affect this crystalline structure. And so he did a simple experiment of a water bottle with the word love, just written on it, a water bottle, and this is in Japanese. Um, and then I believe the other was the equivalent of either hate or you suck of some form. Yeah, I remember yeah. I remember one being love and gratitude and the other being you disgust me. Something okay, like that. that's it. Yeah. All right. So so there we go. And in his experiment, I think he did it with his family and then for a month and then once a day they would touch the water bottle and whatever the word was, love or gratitude, thank you. They would say the word, they would say this, you know, the other you disgust me to the other and at the end of the month he photographed these different and I would encourage anybody who has not seen this go on YouTube, buy the book. You would be blown away at the beautiful crystalline structure that develops um, with the higher vibrational words and the gunk that is photographed with the lower vibrational words. And even though I'd spent decades kind of going through this left right brain experiment, my brain was about exploded when I, you know, first really just sat with that concept of we always hear law of attraction thoughts or things but for it to be measured scientifically to be able to see it in a photograph and it to be something that can be replicated is it, it just blows my mind at, at what that speaks and you know where that can go and so what i think is interesting also as I spent some time on YouTube there's a ton of experiments out there people are using rice and this is easy for anyone to try I would encourage I have not tried it but I will um, is they cook some rice and it doesn't matter I think white rice probably gives you the best visual representation of this but some white rice put some in a uh, like a mason jar tighten the lid as much as you can same with the second one 
Um, and there's a couple of different experiments online that I saw. One I wanted to reference, uh, Master Your Influence, the rice experiment. This, this dude was just very funny and um, charismatic, and it was fun to listen to his experiment. But um, he did not even speak the word, so he used love and hate. He spent 30 seconds thinking about the word love while he held the jar, wrote it on there, love, did the same thing with hate, did not use the, his um, stance was that the, um, the spoken word has a higher vibrational frequency, which I don't believe is true, but it, it was fascinating that he chose not to even use the word, but to just use the thought and direct it at this rice, 30 seconds. Then he wrote it on a piece of tape, put it on the mason jar, same thing for the hate, stuck it, I think in a box in his office, never looked at it, never did anything with it for 30 days. And to see the difference in both of these jars was the physical proof is just irrefutable. And it's done over and over and over on the internet, of kids coming in and doing it in plastic jars and them visually. And I, and I imagine, you know, a future where our children saw this experiment play out in their kitchen and think about that. They think about that when they're telling themselves, oh, I can't do that. You know, I, I, or when they're thinking about, you know, how they feel about things and about themselves and what they, you know, what they say to themselves when they look in the mirror. So, so. and yeah, so, and the idea here is the human body is made up of what percent water? 70 to 90 percent. Right. The vast right. majority of us is made up of water, right? And so the idea of simply positive reinforcement and positive thinking about yourself to yourself if 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 that if that's true right if if this experiment is true from this book if the this rice experiment is true of how it develops and looks beautiful when when you use positive or loving gratitude type words versus hate and disgusting and negative words if, if that's all true because i know a lot of you are thinking this is a bunch of woo woo BS, right? I know, I know people are thinking that, right? Get the formula. <laughs> so, so, but if, but just hear us out here. If just, just let us say, if this is true, then wouldn't it be realistic to think that the words and the thoughts that you have about yourself have a vast impact on your life? and everything around you in your life, right? So I, I, I believe it with 100% certainty, personally, because I've, kind of like you, I've seen things happen because of consistent thinking and uh, manifestation and the way, that, <clears throat> the way the mind can work and create situations. And when it comes to, you know, so tying this a little bit back to trading, Think about think about this because you know we we have the benefit of having a, a nice community of hundreds of traders interacting constantly about what they're doing, and and when I see people, you know, beating themselves up or having these negative posts or negative comments, it just it it kind of makes my chest tighten up, right? It makes me cringe a little bit because I know what they're doing to themselves. And I I I have to be a little bit careful because I don't I don't want to come off as condescending or you shouldn't do that. I'm better than you. Don't, you know, that kind of thing. And so, you know, I have to be a little bit careful about how I how I uh, react to those things, but I but that's the reason we why I wanted to do this episode with you is because I wanted to be able to share this with people. To, to make sure that they understand the power of their actions and thoughts and words about themselves and what they're doing and specifically to trading. Because we know the whole basis of this, of this podcast, the Trade Hacker Mindset, is that the mental aspect of trading is a massive, massive part, right? You, you can have two traders who have the exact same strategy and one could be uber successful and one can be mediocre or a losing trader, right? So what's the difference? Well, it's right here, right? It's right between your ears. It could be the things that you're saying to yourself. I mean, I, uh, I, I know specifically for me, I used, to, I used to have a really bad habit 
if I would, you know, make a mistake in my trades or do something in trading that I knew I wasn't supposed to, you know, I would be like, you are such an effing idiot. You know, I, I would, I would say these things to myself and I really had to focus on the awareness of not doing that and tracking and seeing the impact through my journaling that that, that actually had on my trading. And it was, it was priceless, right? So, so that, that's, that's the whole concept here is, is wanting to make sure that you understand the power of your thoughts, the power of your words to yourself and how, how that can really impact your trading. And listen, the trading part is probably the most minimal benefit that, you, that you'll receive from this, right? It's all the other, uh, you know, fruits of your, of your life that you'll see in addition to your, you know, better trading from, from this concept. But I, I think it's such a powerful thing. So if, if this is a foreign concept to you, like it used to be to me, just do a little bit more research. Like Laura said, you know, get on YouTube, do some searches about this stuff and just, just, just leave the door open a little bit to see if it it might sink in and it might there might be a little bit of truth to it because in my experience and I know it, it you know what Laura shared with me in her experience the uh, the the power of these things has been just unexplainable it is it is and I want to share uh, one small example and one big example um, neither relate to trading but I believe it relates to life and it, it, it can have a big impact on maybe, you know, maybe somebody can relate to being in their calculator years or their left brain years and say, no, 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 no. I just, just get me to the formula, you know, and, and, and maybe it, me sharing that and moving past that will, will help somebody. I don't know. But one of the things that um, in Dr. Ramoto's book that he photographed before and after he had a gunky water blob he uh did a prayer over it and then photographed it again and it was transformed into this spectacular geometric almost like what you would expect a snow crystal to look like or a snowflake kind of a, and, a disney snowflake right yes and so t to speak to that um i did a side hustle in neuroscience for a few years and um, it was using neurofeedback techniques, and it was based on the idea that you could, with the neuroplasticity in the brain, um, plasticity, that you could retrain your brain to react to stress in a different way. So if me saying to you, you're late, for some reason triggers you because of something that happened, you can, you can grab that reaction in the moment with biofeedback or neurofeedback to try to have a different outcome. So I had a, and, and it, it involved sensors on the brain, um, sitting in a chair for a long period of time, um, going through some exercises and with sound tones, it, it rewards the brain for choosing something different, for choosing a healthier response. So I happened to be watching this, it was actually my brother-in-law, was doing some uh, a brain training exercise and he was having a very difficult, so alpha is the, the frequency where we have the feel good, we feel calm, maybe we feel connected to a higher source. Beta might be the accounting department of our brain where we're executive functioning. Well, we want these to be in the right balance in certain parts of the brain. So whatever this training exercise was, was to help him increase alpha in this particular lobe of the brain. And we weren't getting anywhere. We had done it um, just for hours, you know, over the course of a week. And I sat there and, this is the God's honest truth. I sat there and I prayed and I raised my own alpha and I watched on the screen his alpha um, levels increase. And despite everything that you think I wouldn't be surprised anymore, I, it still blew me away. It was still that same moment of seeing Dr. Emoto's work and seeing how powerful thoughts are and prayers are and, you know, the studies of people not even realizing they've been prayed for, having better survival rates, lower risk of heart attack, less stress, like physical measurable differences in it, not even realizing if they're in the control group or the, the group that's being prayed for um, is, is phenomenal. And so I, I saw that firsthand, you know, based on that experience of um, the neurofeedback. But the one, and I really thought about 
whether this was relevant to share um, because it has nothing to do with trading. It, but it's the most powerful example that I have. Um, so if you'll just um, let me have a couple of minutes to give you the background story. Uh, my husband and I, so Jeff, we married in early 2000s. He married into, I was divorced with four children under the age of 10, thinking I'm never going to date again, ever. So along comes Jeff, just a fantastic, fantastic guy. I mean, he was one of 11 kids, so he always said that was half a family. That was nothing. And we always thought maybe we would have children together because he had none. Well, that involved two reversal surgeries, one for him, one for me. And during those years, my dad had been diagnosed with, um, in his mid-50s, early onset dementia. So in addition to raising the four that I brought to the party, we were raising my dad in reverse. So anybody who's ever watched someone go through dementia knows what that's like. It's like raising a child in reverse. And so we just got really busy during those years. And um, when my dad lost his battle, Jeff turns to me one day and he says, what would you think of trying in vitro just once? And I said, well, honey, we're in our 40s. I think that ship has sailed. He's like, here's where he got me. He says, well, let's let the universe decide. We'll just do it one time and see. And, and if it's meant to be, you know, the universe will work it out. Well, that's where he got me was the whole universe thing. But um, I, I wanted to pull a study up because back in of, about that time, this was an article that came out. It was called One Last Chance for Pregnancy. It was published in 2005. And it says the live birth rate of uh, women 40 to 43 years was less than 10%. And that was after four to five rounds of in vitro and uh, only 60% would carry to a full pregnancy. So in the, the, the odds were very low. It was probably less than a 6% chance that it would work. And I was also 45. So I was outside the range. So it truly was gonna take a miracle for this to work. And so we went through, so our, the area that I live in, the Jones Institute was responsible for the first test tube baby back in, I think the eighties, it's very, very famous, which is where we went. And the money we had set aside to buy two jet skis, we spent on this round of IVF. And um, I had done quite a bit of reading about different rates of these different clinics. And what clued me into this was that one of them talked about having a higher rate of success because they had certain types of air filters in the clinic. And I thought, huh, I wonder, another study talked about filtered water and that's when the light bulb went off. I went back and found my book, Hidden Messages in Water, and I thought, I mean, what could it hurt? It cost me nothing. Um, and so things fell into place, you know, so that we were able to fast track this whole thing. And the day of, and, and it was a lot of hormones and it was a lot of going through a lot of stuff and also a lot of fear because I didn't want Jeff to be disappointed. Um, you know, our other kids were now teenagers, so it was like starting all over and I didn't want to be disappointed myself. So the day of the transfer, I had written on my stomach. Now go back to the idea of the word and the, and the pictures when you go to look at the pictures of the hidden messages in water. I wrote thank you twice on my abdomen. And so I'm taken into the operating room and that's where they do the transfer. And Dr. Oninger, who has this thick German accent and this big wad of, blo of like white hair, kind of like Einstein says, what is this? So he was just like thrown and we didn't say anything. And um, so eight weeks later, we found out we were having twins. Wow. <laughs> that is my real life story of bringing thoughts into like from the unseen into the scene it, it it's just and, and you know these are the same twins that this morning were arguing over who was going to get the you know the cheddar chips in their lunch this morning <laughs> <laughs> and they're how old now they're 10 mm -hmm. oh wow they're 10. So, so cool a long-winded story to explain there was no reason it should have worked it, it really it's i believe that the power of words and intention can just move mountains. I mean, can bring life into the world. So what could it do to our trading? You know, like that's, that is such a monumental event in my life. And why can't it 
you know, involve everything? Why can't it touch everything? And so that's, that, those are the questions that I ask, you know, as a, as a, as a human, as a scientist, as a mom, um, and th that I'm super interested in. And I, I, I think it just comes back to self-awareness and just opening, for me, it was opening my mind and sort of disconnecting a little bit from the, the left brain analytical, this is the way the formula works and, you know, gonna move on to things. There's, there's a little bit of magic, you know, involved or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's all energy really, but, um, so, you know, that, that was my example. Wow, um, that's amazing. So how, so how are you using this concept in your own trading? Well, a few years back, there was a movie called 51st Dates by Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. I, think I remember that well. Every day she has to start over. Every day she has to start over. She has to leave herself notes. Well, this is sort of what happens to me when the market is open. For some reason, my brain shuts down. So in my trade plan, it has to be written in a way that my first grade self or my Drew Barrymore self can follow it. And it's got to be written. It's got to be simple. It's got to be um, followable. And, and, it, and it has to be unique to me having gone through well, what, what makes me feel good. You know, does day trading make me feel good? Mm, not so much. Not yet. I'm still learning that one. Um, I just try to lean into the energy of, um, of things. And for me, I've, I've been paying attention, you know, for a few years as to what, what works for me. And some of that is a swing trade lifestyle. Um, I did not think I would like weekly options. I thought it was going to be a little, I had traded Forex, you know, for a number of years, getting up at three in the morning, day trading, it really all to break even. I, I fortunately didn't lose money, but you know, a year and a half of really following my rules, doing my discipline, doing, getting up at three in the morning, you know, the whole point wasn't to break even. And, um, so I walked away from, I always say I broke up with day trading about that time. So it, I, for me, it's really just leaning into what, what appeals to me, like what gives me the most energy and for where I am right now, it's, it's more swing trading. It's more rules based approach. It's more, I really don't want to have to make any discerning judgments when the market is open because I've learned my brain shuts down and I just want it to be. So I am coming full circle back to the show me the formula, but um, because I've been able to design it for what works for me, it helps me create a plan. It's helping me um, establish discipline. You know, um, if I make a mistake, generally, you know, it almost never is that I broke my rule. It's just that I went long instead of going short or, you know, like I was in the moment of maybe a little bit of nervousness. And so that's my focus now is to just work on those issues. Definitely. And I know, um, and, and by the way, I'm going to give you a little props here, but one, one of the reasons that, that, you know, we started talking and I wanted to have you on an episode was because you shared you know, one of the strategies that you've, you've just recently started is, is our navigation trend trading strategy. And you, you shared your trading plan with me and it literally is the most in-depth. It's amazing. It, it's, it's one of the, you know, best trading plans I've ever seen. You know, it's, it's something that is way beyond what I, what I've ever done for myself. And so it's just, which by the way, for you, for you all listening, she, we're, we're going to do another another session at some point, hopefully just, just based on her trade plan and, and, and share all the details with that. But, um, it, it's, it's just amazing. The, the amount of detail that you went into and, uh, not only the, of the strategy and your position size and your rules, but also the journaling side of it, of, you know, how did you feel when you're in this trade and, and how did you feel when you entered and exited and, and all the different things. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful. And, um, you know, just goes Quite to props for that because that wasn't one of the items I wanted to do. In fact, I wanted that the least, but it really has helped quite a bit. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and so outside of that strategy, what other, what other kind of core strategies are you trading right now? Well, I'm, I had never traded futures before, um, landing at your, you know, at your courses. And I still go back and think, I cannot remember how I ended up finding your your site it's i just think it was one of those things that must have been meant to be 
Um, and I've done tons and tons and tons of coaching and training and, you know, with other groups. And it, it, it's really great when you find your home, you find your people and you find the like mindedness. Um, and so I, I just want to thank you for that. But um, so I'm slowly disconnecting from some of my longer term strategies of holding stock and selling covered calls. It, it's very difficult for me to systematize that. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult for me to establish a rules-based system for that. So it's also very capital intensive. I, I, you know, you have to wait through huge drawdowns, waiting for your stock to come back. So I'm, I'm still working through some of that in some of my bigger accounts. Um, but with, you know, with your, and I did the wheel quite a bit in 2022 with some naked puts, which um, anybody who traded in 22 can imagine that was, Maybe not the best year to learn that strategy, um, but okay, it, it's all, it's coming back, and um, you know, part of my learning. And I did lose some money last year, and I want to say I'm so grateful for that. I am so grateful that I had a holy crap moment because I think that is what opened my thinking to spreads and to some different volatility strategies and seeking more balance. And I think that's how I found uh, navigation trading. So, you know, while it's not fun to see your account go down, I will always be grateful for 2022 because of that. You know, I think um, my, well, I, I think this goes for every trader ever, but it, it, seem, it, it seems to me anyway, that our biggest breakthroughs as traders always come after losing sessions whether it be a losing year, a losing month, a losing week, depending on the duration of types or type of trading we're doing. But the, the biggest breakthroughs and the biggest lessons are always learned from losing trades. I think as humans, that's how we learn the best. And so I've told you, I have six kids. I have one that will learn from the mistakes of others. And I, I don't know how that's possible, but it, you know, and watching kids grow up is like a grand science experiment. Also, it's kind of fun to watch. And I would like to aspire to that, to be able to set down some of the ego, set down some of the determined, you know, strong willed, you know, rigid thinking that, that I still have and, and learn the easy way. And so, you know, one of my goals is, you know, like I'll, I'll put a water bottle on my desk now and for what I'm hoping, you know, to be able to achieve that day. So today was balance and then I'll just drink the water. And, um, but that is one of the ones that I want to put on my list is to learn, allow myself to learn things the easy way. Okay. Easy so going back, going back to your water bottle, this is, this is actually where I was going next. So, you know, you mentioned, you know, I said, how, how are you applying the, the concepts of hidden messages and water to your trading? And, and you started talking about your trade plan, which obviously involves notes and comments and, you know, a lot of self-awareness. Uh, but but how else are you applying that concept? I mean, that that's that's a that's a good example, you know, putting a specific word or phrase on water bottle, drinking out of that each day. I mean, do you have sticky notes all over your computer with different words too? I, that, that's what I'm imagining here. Well, so, so let us like know, take us inside your, your battle yeah. station. Yes. Um, I'm also, uh, I was <laughs> diagnosed with adult ADD. I've, I've had it my whole life, which I think is some of the stuff I'm working through with trading. Like I've, you know, got these things running in my head that I must have decided when I was six. Well, you know, I'm not six anymore, but for some reason that program's still running. And, you know, just being aware. And, and I'll share this with you. This is one of the best things I ever learned about energy work. And so that's to answer, to speak to your question is, what's here now? Just those three words, what's here now? And for me, you know, because I'm running at a thousand miles an hour, I'm doing 17 things and nothing all at once, you know, <laughs> the ADD brain is just to stop and say, what's here now? Like I, like I made a mistake, entered the wrong number of contracts on my futures order. It, like what's here now? Like where am I feeling that? Like what, what is the mental dialogue that I'm having in my head about that? And that, is that really, you know, the present day Laura, or is that a different Laura that's just reacting to some trauma and, and, and the script is running. So it, it just comes back to that. What's here now. And just a little bit more mindfulness 
to be able to, and, and you're aware of some of the stuff when I submitted my trade plan, I was so afraid it was awful. And it, I was so surprised that I got a positive, you know, feedback on it. But that just speaks to not being in the present moment, not being, you know, aware of what's here now and, and then sitting with that or finding ways to process it. I mean, I, I, I have all kinds of energy techniques that, that I've learned over the years that work, but cumbersome sometimes, but other, you know, and it, it, I like to use EFT. It's an emotional freedom technique where, um, it's basically restoring the energy circuits in, um, and when we're all energy. So if our energy is disrupted, um, that's going to affect the flow. So EFT kind of can get you back to being in a state of the proper flow. And so sometimes that helps. That sounds like a good topic for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, and, and before we go here, I do want to, I do want to go back and touch on one thing that you said, you know, you said sometimes you feel like it's your six year old self kind of running the ship. And I've, I've mentioned on this on different episodes in the past that, you know, our subconscious mind is nearly fully developed. I've heard age, you know, from ages four to eight, basically. Mm-hmm. So what's in the middle of that six, you know, exactly what you said. And so what, what, what a lot of people don't realize is that that subconscious mind is controlling the vast, vast, vast majority of our thoughts. And so if you think about that from a trading perspective, when you're making trading decisions, a lot of times it's the six year old self that's running the ship that are making tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars of trading decisions. It's your six year old self. And so being aware that, so again, big, big topic, we could go yeah. eight different directions on, but yes. just wanted to hit that. Cause you mentioned it. It's, it's such a, uh, such a powerful thing. I agree. Well, Laura, this has been fun. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think there are uh, a lot of other, you know, you're, you have a very different background than me. You have a different way of thinking. Uh, and so for me, I think, you know, my community hears me talking and I'm doing my videos, my episodes every day. And so, um, that's just, that's my perspective, right? That's, that's comes from, from my environment, my background, my everything, the way that I think. And so I, I love having, you know, somebody like you on the podcast who has a totally different perspective, totally different background. And I think it'll be a lot of help to a lot of people. So if you so. will indulge us, I would love to have you back again in the future and, and talk about some other concepts. Be great. I may not have a bigger story than, you know, birthing two children. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You set the bar up here. You, you better come back with something really good. Oh, I got to get to work. <laughs> All right, Laura, thank you very much. And thank, thank you everyone for listening. And we'll see you on the next episode.